Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hello and welcome, or welcome back if you're returning. My name is Burr, and if you are a fan of MMOs, RPGs, JRPGs, obscure video games, art, music, fun stuff, <laughs> then you should subscribe because that is what we do here. Also, uh, don't forget to give this video a like because that super helps combat the algorithm. So, what was your secret meeting all about? I'm all ears. A diplomatic mission to Annex Troy, you say? Well, I suppose that does take precedence. But should your meeting with Vidofner happen in early, you might consider rendezvousing with Ystola in Idleshire. She'll be there to receive our guest. Don't get me wrong, your meeting with the dragons is terribly important and everything, but this scholar just happens to be. Time permitting, as I said, we shall endeavor to join Ishtola, but if we cannot, pray pass on our regards. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Tataru. Let us be off, Burr. We have kept the first commander waiting long enough. Priorities. Tataru trying to keep us in line. I miss the middle man, though. I can't help it. <laughs> I'm kind of curious. I want to go do that one real quick. Because why not? Whatever! I do what I want! We have a mysterious stranger. I, you know, you can't tell me that, that expect me to do anything else but go see a mysterious stranger. So mysterious. Who are you? Who is it? My thanks for coming. Who are you? There is a worry about Ulu Kalhai? Urukal, hi, is my name, and I serve a friend. I sought you out that I might alert you to the rising threat of the beings known as icons. You are aware of the threat, you say. <laughs> ah, but I speak not of the primals with which you are exceedingly well acquainted. It may interest you to know that the term icon and the beings to which it refers precede the Garlean Empire by eras. You see, it is the name by which the Alagons called godlike beings, the dark divinity Odin among them. <laughs> Odin! And the Garleans, who seek to emulate the glory of ancient Alag, have simply availed themselves of it. Pray p permit me to continue the tale. Oh, the Ah, Ariange, how kind of you to join us. This person's very tidy. As the Warrior of Light's comrade, my participation is but to be expected. After all, the matter not pertain to the very fate of this star. The icons of Eld, in the distant past, these mighty beings set off a fierce resistance to the Alagad Empire. However, they eventually fell to the men of Alag, who devised the means by which to capture them. It did not end with capture, as you well know. Four of the Alagans also learned how to harness the icon's power. They refined the knowledge at the ether, these words, ethereal chemical research facility on Azizla, and within the centrifugal crystal engine, they sealed three of the beings, the Warring Triad. It was first and foremost to acquire the infinite power of the Warring Triad that the Archbishop did seek Azizla. But in the wake of his defeat, the bindings which confined the icons were severely damaged. Doubt not, but that they will fail completely ere long. Know that we do not condemn you for striking down the Archbishop. You are simply fulfilling your destiny, and yet, were the Warring Triad to be released into the world, unimaginable destruction would ensue. Take heart, for there's hope still. Oh, jeez. Through swift action, we may yet prevent their awakening and see them resealed. But in dealing with this new threat, our first step must be to contend with the old. Two savage gods are returned, I fear, summoned once more by their worshippers, and at a strength far surpassing their previous incarnations. Oh, great. I speak of the primals Ravana and Bismarck. If left unchecked, they will inevitably seek to seize the power of the warring triad. This will serve to feed the confluence of chaos and hasten the icon's awakening. To it, we must needs vanquish both their kinds. I pray thee, however, to first focus thy gaze upon the primals, ere we turn our attention to those icons and their fitful slumber. I shall return to the waking sands forthwith and consider such measures as are available to us. Meanwhile, I bid thee attend to the task of eliminating the primals. 
Young Urukalai shall assist thee. Rest assured he is not our enemy, for the time being at least. Alrighty then. Cool. It's good to know. <laughs> Let's go back to Foundation, I suppose. That's where she is, right? You are ready then? Good, so am I. The path has long been known to us. From Falcon's Nest, we shall cross the Western Highlands and make Patel Feather in the Dravidian Forelands. Then we can stop to rest and replenish our supplies. Questions? If not, then the stables await. Well, he's eager to go. He's being bossy again. That's okay, she was right here. It always looks so much farther on the map. I don't know why. Everything looks bigger on the map. <laughs> I always imagined that the first time I set foot upon Dravidian soil would be at the head of an army, and here I am, ready to treat with the brothers and sisters of my enemies. Full well do I know how difficult it can be to set aside the past, though it was I who first proposed recruiting, recruiting Zell to our cause. I questioned the wisdom of my words almost as soon as I had uttered them, but for a long time after that. Here was a woman with the blood of innocence on her hands, men, women, children, all slain in the name of the Im Implacable Lady Iceheart. Yet she acknowledged her misdeeds and agreed to join us in common cause. At our side, she fought in service to that greater good, even unto her dying breath. And while that does not absolve her of her sins, I, I hope that one day she will be remembered not merely as a heretic, but as a misguided soul who dreamt of peace. You ask much, Master Alphador. Yet you can say what might come to pass should our negotiations bear fruit. Who could say? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. We must press on to Enix Tried. If you will follow me. It's all business with Alphano today. I mean, I guess that's typical, but... I don't know why I'd assume he'd be on the top floor, but, you know, whatever. I don't think like a dragon. <laughs> Thou art ever welcome here, friend of his all. Is all I... But this one I do not know. Pray forgive us this unannounced visit, Vidalfler. May I present to you Lucia, first commander of the Temple Knights of Ishgard, and our friend, our trusted friend. It is an honor to meet you, Vidalfler. I have come as an envoy of Sir Eberic, Lord Commander of the Temple Knights, and the acting leader of the Holy See. Indeed, you may speak, Knight. For one thousand years, men and dragon have been locked in an endless cycle of bloodshed and sorrow. To our shame, we long believed your kin to be the architects of this war, but now we know the truth, that King Thornton and his Knights Twelve did willfully betray and murder the great worm of Red Tosker, shattering the peace between our peoples. For one thousand years, our leaders conspired to conceal this truth, a truth which was at last laid bare by the Warrior of Light, the Azure Dragoon, and Azal. Alas, a deception so intricately wrought cannot be undone in a moment, and our people labor to accept the truth. After an eternity of war, who would dare to dream that peace could at last be within our grasp? Yet dream we must, as Yassel once did, and we must make that dream a reality, as she could not. We humbly beseech you, Vidalfur, join hands with us in friendship once more, before the eyes of my people in Ishgard. A most unexpected invitation. I have heard your request, Knight. However, I cannot yet give you my answer. May I ask why? This matter concerneth my sire. He must needs be consulted. Moreover, the Nath grow bold, even as they did before, and I would not leave my people at the mercy of the swarm. The Nath. Then we will wait. After a thousand years at war, we shall not give up on peace for want of patience. Ha! <laughs> Fear not, knight. Thou shalt have my answer within thy lifetime. So soon, <laughs> my humble thanks. I shall bear your words to my lord forthwith until we meet again. <laughs> Given the circumstances, I would say that went rather well. To be frank, I'm surprised our proposal was not rejected outright. Whether or not it will come of it remains to be seen, however. Mayhap I should take this opportunity to speak with some of the other dragons. Ah, but you need not wait for me. The return journey holds no fears for me now. Well, if you have no further need of our services, we shall continue on to Charlene. We hope to welcome a scholar who has agreed to aid us in the search for our missing comrades. Then I pray your journey is as swift and uneventful as ours was, 
and thank you again for sparing the time to assist us, even when such grave matters remain unresolved. I can think of no graver matter than a thousand year war, one which our friends gave their lives to see ended. Suffice it to say, I would willingly make a thousand such journeys to ensure that their sacrifice was not in vain. Of that I have no doubt, Master Alphino. I only hope the fates will not hold you to your word. Yeah, bite your tongue, boy. You're <laughs> gonna drink this. You crazy son of a gun. Who's that little person? A potato? A new potato? So it would seem we have time to greet this scholar after all. How delightful. I shall be interested in, to hear how she means to go about finding with Billy and Thagrid. I can only assume she is privy to some new investigative technique. In any event, our first order of business is to rendezvous with the Stola in Idleshire. It's cheese. I dream of cheese. A burr. Tis good to see you. I confess I had assumed your business at Annex tried to detain you no longer. Uh, would detain you longer. Did your meeting with Vidofner go well? As well as can be expected. She must discuss uh, Emmerich's proposal with her else. <laughs> of course, but you seem amenable, amenable to the suggestion. Oh, these words are killing me today. What about Charlotte and Guest? Has she arrived yet? She has, but when I explained that you would be joining us, she asked if she might use the intervening time to explore. I agreed to meet her outside on Front Bridge. We should be on our way. In the rain. Are you serious? So pretty. Oh yeah, that's right. There's that big old thing in the lake. Da, da, da. She's so small. I love her jacket. That's adorable. <sighs> I'm terribly, terribly sorry to have kept you all waiting. You need not apologize. We arrived but a moment ago ourselves. His Pray, face. Allow oh my me god. To introduce Crow, <laughs> who has recently come from the Charlian motherland. She has generously offered to assist us. Alfie. Oh, please, think nothing of it. A trip to Eorzea was long overdue. You must be the warrior of light. Yes, you certainly do look the part. <laughs> A pleasure to meet you at last, miss. And who is that I spy but young Alpha No Levier himself? I dare say someone's grown an ill more too in my absence. Or are those lifts in your boots? We, um... <clears throat> Miss Cryle and I met at the studium years ago. I shall forever be indebted to her for her sage guidance. It was no small it's task so keeping him out of trouble, believe you me. The youngest ever to enter the studium. Him and his sister, 11-year-old prodigies. So funny, so cute. Suffice it to say, social graces were not among his list of talents. Striding up to his seniors on his first day, head held high. What was it he said again? Thank you, Kyle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> For what? I haven't finished yet. Would you care to attempt a more dexterous deflection? Oh dear. <clears throat> Mayhap we should save this delightful conversation for a more fitting occasion, when pressing matters do not demand our undivided attention. <laughs> a bit much, but better. I can tell you have been putting your skills to use here in Eorzea. Henceforth, I trust you will dazzle me with your eloquence at the first time of asking. Oh my gosh, <laughs> she's such, so funny. Oh, poor Alfie. <laughs> right, on to more pressing matters. Finding Minfilia and the other missing scions. I gather you have new information to share with us. A new approach, actually. Tataru recounted the tale of your escape, and it gave me an idea. Simply put, assuming Thancred left some manner of trail when you whisked him away, as is almost always the case with teleportation magics, 
I am confident I can find and follow it. Then what are you waiting for? The wherewithal to do it. The fact is my abilities aren't quite up to the task. Not in themselves, anyway. If I had Master Matoya's crystal eye, on the other hand... Then let us all call on her forthwith. I think it best that you explain your plan to her in person. Back to the old lady. So funny. I want her coat. It's so cute. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Run away. Punk. Ha. Showed them. I cry. I'll tell me more about Alfie. You did say we were headed to our cave, did you not? Because I certainly don't see a cave nearby. It's Master Matoya meeting us on the way or something. I have heard many stories of Master Matoya, some quite flattering, others less so. Rest assured, they are all true. This way, and have care where you tread. that trouble I smell? Or did you forget to wipe your boots on the way in? Forgive us, Master Matoya. We will be sure to wipe them on the way out. And may I say how glad I am that age has not yet deprived you of your senses. Ever so quick-witted, aren't we? To the detriment of your manners. Well, out with it then. What do you want? Pray, allow me to introduce myself, Master Matoya. I am Kryl, of the students of Baldessian. I hope you will excuse our unannounced visit. Baldessian, you say? Ah, oh, yes. The old coot set up shop on the Isle of Val, didn't he? Regrettably, our order's headquarters and the Isle itself were obliterated by a magic of immense power. I have the blessing of light to thank for my own preservation. Kryl, you too possess the Echo. Well, yes, of course I do. Our order is devoted to uncovering the mysteries of Hydaelyn and interpreting her will, particularly through the study of her gift to us. It was in the course of these studies that I met and subsequently befriended Minfilia, she and I have rather a lot in common. I had no idea. You weren't supposed to. Not that I wanted to deceive you, you understand. But precautions had to be taken. Yes, yes, that's all well and good. But you still haven't told me why you're here. The students of Baldessian are gone. And there is naught I can do to change that. But the science of the Seventh Dawn can yet be restored, and my dear friend found. You have in your possession an ancient crystal of light, one you call your crystal eye. I believe I can use it to focus my abilities and locate one of the missing scions. And there I was, thinking you might want to make use of my years of experience. Oh, wait here. Long did I ponder the nature of this crystal and its familiar radiance, but never did I suspect it was a crystal of light. On the cusp of an umbral calamity, souls blessed with the power of the Echo invariably appear. To aid these her chosen warriors, Hydaelyn bequeaths to each a slither of her strength in the form of a crystal of light. But as her strength wanes, so too does the potency of her gifts. This crystal, born of an earlier era, is infused with a power far greater than those of this age. You could travel the length and breadth of the land and not find a crystal even a fraction as pure. Its value is beyond measure, as are the risks inherent in its use. No two manifestations of the Echo are alike. 
I, for example, can converse with beings of every shape and size, excepting beasts, contrary to what others would have you believe. Language has nothing to do with it, of course. Rather, I am sensitive to the whispers of the soul, their intent, their very essence even, the traces of which serve to guide the elementals to Yishtola. Far-fetched though it may sound, I believe that with your crystal eye, I may be able to pick up where they left off and follow the remaining trail to Thancred. That is, if I have your permission. Well, the poor sod's not going to find himself. So, as long as you don't drop it or take it out of my sight, you may do with it what you will. Thank you, Master Matoya. Then let us begin. From the Black Shroud, the trail continues to the north and west, towards a mountain, the foot of Som Arl. It was a near thing, but he was not deposited within the rock, I think. The hunters of Tailfeather know those lands well. I say we begin our search there. Well, thank goodness he wasn't stuck in a rock. Were I to find myself in an unfamiliar wilderness, my first instinct would be to seek out signs of civilization. Ordinarily, perhaps, but in his wounded state, he may not have wished to risk contact with strangers of unknown, unknown allegiance. Yet even had Thancred chosen to remain in the forest, the hunters would surely have stumbled across his trail. Tailfeather doesn't strike me as an isolated outpost, though. Merchants and traders pass through reasonably regularly, do they not? In which case, we'll need to provide a more detailed description when we question the locals. Fear not, Kryle. I have already prepared several sketches of Thinkgrid for that very purpose. Is he an artist? This is impressive, you drew him from memory. <laughs> A skill I acquired some years ago for reasons I no longer remember. <laughs> okay. I propose we split up into two pairs. Estrella and I will inquire at the outlying encampments, while Burr and Crown question the residents of Tailfeather. Afterwards, we shall regroup near Loth at Stavath and share our findings. Assuming there are no objections, let us be about it. <laughs> My, he certainly has matured, hasn't he? I'd to imagine he was once a boy who practiced drawing for hours to impress young ladies. <laughs> anyway, we had best get started. Find me when you finish making your rounds. Huh. Finished? In that case, I think we've learned everything we can here. Let's see what the others have found out. My apologies for our late arrival. We thought it wise to question as many hunters as we could. Many have made camp in inaccessible locations, ideal for hunting game, not so receiving visitors. Nevertheless, our time proved well spent. There have been countless sightings of an exceptionally capable Huron hunter with whom no one is familiar. Though none chance to see the man's face, his height and build match Thedgrid's description, as does his fighting prowess. It's just not gonna be him. Because <laughs> nobody saw his face, so they don't know. So you have heard the same tales. Be that as it may, we yet want for conclusive proof. Mayhap this is unrelated, but I heard a curious tale regarding a vast trader. 
He came to tail feather in search of garments fit for a man of refinement, which seemed a rather curious description for one of his kind. You are implying that Fenkrin sent a bath to market in his stead. Why would he not go himself? Well, if you recall, you yourself emerged from the live stream as naked as your name day. It is a scene I shall never forget. <laughs> is it now? Well, I was pleased to see you. I mean, it was a simple statement of fact. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No. Uh, it stands to reason that Thangrid found himself in the same predicament. In any case, if he had dealings with the map, they should be able to tell us, no? Quite right, Ralph. Quite right. Well, what are we waiting for? For all we know, Thangrid could be waiting for us in Loth Astvat. We must go and see the vat right away. Come along, everyone, come along. <laughs> that is really just coming through. Storyteller, hello. <laughs> Quick, click, great hunters, we welcome you once more to Lost House Vat. What do you seek to stay? We seek a man, a man with whom we are told you may have had certain dealings. How curious! The hunters tire of godly sport and pursue mortal prey? No, no, he is not prey, but a friend long missing. Good, good. He is a friend to the bath as well, one with whom we have traded many times. Truly, and you are quite certain it was this man? There is no doubt. The flesh and clothed skins came to us from so uh, lost and weak. He offered meat and hides and trade, and in exchange we attended his wounds. He brought us so much flesh, so kill skilled a hunter as he was. Much flesh. When he asked for garments, we were glad to provide them. And where is he now? Gone to Lothast and Ath, not long ago, when he heard that one mind had summoned our god once more. Ravana is returned. It often did say that the Nath had grown as before, but what could Thangrid hope to accomplish by himself? Honored Elder, we thank you for your help. Would that we could repay his kindness ere we depart, but we must hasten to our comrade's side. Go, great hunters, lest the Nath claim him as a sacrifice. There's always something going on with that guy, you know? Sometimes he's possessed, uh, other times he's like a nomadic hunter, making friends with a bunch of bugs. He's a busy guy. could be Thancred it could be Thancred we must hurry oh snap who this Does it? He just think he fancy. <laughs> it's the warrior of darkness. Is that right? He's like my alter ego. <laughs> Love that his axe is just covered in blood. It's like looking into a mirror. This day, we reclaim the reins of history. This day, we rid ourselves of the Asians forever. Fools playing at heroes, all of you. Is this how you believe you can save your world? 
back. <laughs> we can and we will, Asian. You shall see. Or perhaps you will not. So you are the warrior of light. The savior of Eorzea. That's my name, don't wear it out. Everybody has a headache. It's a wonder you didn't come sooner. What with the primal and all. Lost a step, have we? <laughs> yes, Richard. <laughs> have care. The ether moves strangely around him. That's so funny. It would seem we share a common enemy. Mayhap you would tell us who you are. <laughs> Shall we show them? So cocky. <laughs> well, well, that's just rude. Oh my god. Robin Hood. She's so little. <laughs> Not very sporting of you to interrupt. But so be it. This man and his goatee. This man and his goatee. Mark well our faces, <laughs> warrior of light. For we are the warriors of darkness. Walkers of a different path. And we shall meet again. Did you guys hear that? I'm scared. Warriors of darkness? Really? She speaks what we are thinking. Oh, hi, buddy. What's up? Thancred, are you all right? I like that everybody gets like a redesign from the Scions. That's fun. Definitely. Pleasantries can wait. I'd rather not be here when the Nath arrive. Agreed? We have to join forces, not fight against each other. It's so stupid. <laughs> Suffice it to say, our reunion was not at all as I pictured it. Waiting until the last instant <laughs> to join the fray. Tis plain you have not lost your appetite for the dramatic. My appetite for the dramatic? <laughs> have you forgotten the circumstances of our party? The heroic last stand, the tunnel filling with light, and then... Oh, he has a good point. Had I known you intended to use forbidden magics to deliver me to some god's forsaken wilderness, I would have thanked you in advance. 
Oh, thank Rid. Thank Rid. If nothing else, you might have warned me that I would emerge from the live stream in the altogether. Eventually, I managed to fashion knives from some obsidian I found and set about hunting for meat and hides. Given that I'm not all that skilled in leatherworking, it's probably for the best that I met the Vath before I was reunited with you. So you were the fleshling clothed in skins of whom the storyteller spoke? A description which fit me as ill as the skins themselves. Happily, I was able to trade with the Vath for garments better becoming a man of refinement. From them, I learned of Ravana, and of the great warrior who had once laid him low. And thence did you conclude that were you to track the Primal's movements, it would surely bring you into contact with the Scions once more. It seemed a reasonable assumption. I could think of no one else with your enthusiasm for slaying beastmen gods. Until now, that is. Ah, yes. The self-proclaimed Warriors of Darkness. Tis only fitting that they stand in opposition to the Warrior of Light, I suppose. I glimpsed the leaders past, if only for a moment. They were confronting a man in black. An Asian, I think. If these warriors are capable of doing battle with Asians and Primals both, they must be possessed of powerful protection. Protection not unlike the Echo. But who could be protecting them? Johnny Cash! Blessed with the power of the Echo, and driven to put down Primals. Despite his declaration that they walk a different path, I struggle to see how their goals conflict with ours. Nor is that the only oddity. I find it passing strange that such exceptional individuals should have wholly escaped our notice until now. Surely we would have heard rumors and attempted to recruit them to our cause. I recall no such adventurers, and I would not soon forget their like, nor would any of us, I think. One of our primary duties was to scour the city-states for promising candidates, which is how I found Burr. Ah, the memories. It seems like only yesterday that you slew your first primal. Speaking of which, I had the distinct impression that it was not the first time that men, merry men and women had killed a god. I labor to believe that a man of pr pr preternaturally gifted adventurers has been traveling the land, slaying primals without our knowledge, would imply gross negligence on our part. Yeah, they just kind of came out of nowhere. It's kind of weird. Speculation will avail us not. There is far too much we do not know. For the present, we must needs concentrate on what we do know, namely that Lord Ravana is no more. The offender must be informed. The news may render her more receptive to Sir Emmerich's invitation. Since you seem to have affairs here well in hand, I shall take my leave. Simply being in the vicinity of this colony is giving me a stinking headache. If you have need of me, I shall be with Master Matoya. I would beg her assistance with the search for Mephilia. Wait, Mithilia is missing? I thought she escaped with Burr. I shall explain on the road. Much has happened in your absence. Don't point the fingers at me, I have nothing to do with it. Got him. Ew. I come bearing uh, news you might be interested in. I had not thought to see thee again so soon, mortal. If you thou seekest the night, Know that she hath long since departed for Ishgard. My thanks, the Dauphineur, but it was not for her that we came. We bring good tidings for you and yours. Lord Ravana, who had been summoned by the Nath, has been again been laid low. Truly, once more you mortals have succeeded where my own kind did fail. You have our deepest thanks. Well, it wasn't really us. Would that we could take credit, the god fell by another's hand. Another? Revelation upon revelation. Regardless, it is cause for celebration. The Nath will have no choice but to withdraw. But to another matter, I have tidings for thee as well. Regarding the Ishgardian's invitation, as promised, I brought the matter to my sire. Hearken to his answer now. 
For a thousand years have I mourned my beloved, who gave her life to forge a peace thy king betrayed. Such was my lot, until a child of Ishgar came unto me. For want of warmth, she wrapped herself in a dream, yet the world will remember her deeds. For truth she fought, for justice she sinned, for redemption she sacrificed and became as light. To follow one's heart, to have faith in one's convictions, be it for will or be it for woe. Such is the folly of the glory of man and of dragon. He hath entrusted the choice to us, and we have made it. We will keep faith with you who walk in the light. Then you accept Sir Emmerich's invitation. Let it be known that I, Vidofra, shall journey unto Ishgard on behalf of my people. Yay! We are honored to receive your answer, and will convey your words to our allies without delay. That's fantastic! It is happening, Isel. Would that you are here to see it. Oh. This place is just always so miserable looking. Oh my gosh. Even as the Scions celebrated the return of a long lost friend, honorable men plotted to deprive them of another. Honorable men, to whom Sir Emmerich was no hero, but a scheming patricide. Are you freaking kidding me? Who the heck is that guy? Honorable men, who would fain wash the paving stones of foundation with the tyrant's blood. Honorable men, whose knife in the dark was the spark which set the city aflame. And who sang as it burned. Okay, now I'm really bad. That's so sad. What the heck? Uh, right, let us not keep so ever equating. Uh, so did it just happen? Are you quite well, Thancred? Yes, yes, quite well. Forgive me. You have given me rather a lot to digest. This whole affair with the Ishgardians and the Dravidians... That our friends know where to be found. It would seem there is no end to our troubles. We can but face them head on, one at a time. But now, we must apply ourselves to our allotted tasks and leave the others to theirs. Remember, Thancred, we found you as they found me. In time, we will find Ida and Papalimo and Midphilia as well. These troubles will soon be but a memory, one which we shall look back on together. Pray do not misunderstand. I did not mean to imply that it would be otherwise. I merely wish that I had rejoined our grand adventure at one of its more triumphal moments. Despite your recent accomplishments, the mood here is less than celebratory. But I have no doubt that we will enjoy many more glorious victories soon enough, and you may rest assured that I will play my part in them to the very hilt. I know you will. So then, to the congregation. Oh, here we go. Here comes heartbreak. <laughs> you have returned. In this, at least, the fates are kind. Greetings, First Commander. It pleases me to inform you that Vidofner has accepted Sir Emmerich's invitation. She has. These are glad tidings, indeed. Would that the Lord Commander were here to hear them. Ah, is he otherwise engaged? Aye, sleeping off a knife to the gut. What? What happened? Will he live? The Terusians tell me he will make a full recovery, but had Lord Edma and Lord Arturel had not been on hand when the assassin struck, he would not have been so fortunate. For a mercy, they subdued the fiend before he could land the telling blow. The attack was just the beginning, though. Not long after, buildings all around the city, including several of ours, burst into flame. Bastards caught us completely by surprise. We've been doused in the fires, but for every one we put out, it seems like two more start up. Casualties are mounted, especially in the broom. Tis plain these fires were started by the assassins' conspirators. Until they have been rounded up, there will be no end to this. Will you help us find them? 
Then let us be about it. Oh, you betcha. You bet your bottom dollar. The flames are spreading. We must needs begin our investigation immediately. Witnesses must be found. Suspects must be identified. Have you been able to determine the precise locations where the fires were set? Maybe there is a pattern. If there is, we have yet to discern it. Fires have been reported throughout the city in both the pillars and foundation. Indeed, given the size of the area affected, I think it best to divide our forces. Master Alfredo and Mistress Ishtola, I would have you take charge of the investigation of foundation. As you wish. They have Tataru can be of assistance as well. Meaning, burn me at the pillars. Oh, they'll like me up there. Only question is, will the grizzled old rogue strike an oppose over there be joining us? Grizzled old rogue. That grin of the Saiyans of the Seventh Dawn. And may I say, what a pleasure it is to meet you too, my lady. I'll bet. The name's Hilda. A Saiyan, eh? And there I was thinking I'd found a fellow ruffian amongst all these illustrious part personages. I will remain here to coordinate the fire quenching effort. If you learn all to value, pray inform me immediately. That is all. That is all. Be gone. While we could begin by sifting through charred rubble and questioning random passers-by, in my experience every town has at least one individual who can be counted on to know things he or she should not. Is it that Tataru? Oh, I. The infamous Lord Eminem de Fortal, lover of women and wine. Though neither care for him that much, they say he could gossip for Ishgard. Just the sort of fellow I had in mind. Capital suggestion, bruh. He'll be at the Crozier, most like, making an effort to be seen. So let's go and see him. Oh gosh, this guy. Grizzled, I will accept, but old? Sorry. Hey, what's up? Nice fur coat there, sir. Well, well, if it isn't Bert, dearest of all my friends, you're looking rather glum? Something the matter, old girl. Ah, uh, yes. The arson. Dreadful business, that. An awfully curious, wouldn't you say? There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it at all. Naturally, we've doubled the guard outside the manor, along with most of the other houses. Can't have the old pile going up in flames, after all. The old pile. Oh, in case we are wondering why the hot lot is awash with refugees, the lower levels of the vault have been opened to those unfortunate souls who have lost their homes. Sir Emmerich's orders, from what I hear. Remarkable man, not even a knife in the ribs can keep him from his duties. Actually, old girl, if you were thinking of questioning the refugees, I should be more than happy to accompany you to the hot lot. While you conduct your inquiries, I could offer words of comfort to the distressed and despondent young maidens. Ooh, wait a moment. I know what that is. You're giving me one of your looks, aren't you? You do me an injustice, old girl. I will have you know my heart yearns for what but one rose, prickly though she may be. I sense you remain unconvinced. Very well. If it will help to prove the purity of my intentions, I shall gracefully rescind my offer. Now run along and catch those arsonists. That was not entirely what I had hoped for. Whose idea was it to come here again? <laughs> Never mind. For our next step, I suggest we divide our efforts. While you question the refugees in the Hoplon, Burr, I shall investigate the locations where the fires were set. Would you be so good as to join me, Hilda? You know what? I reckon I would. Can't have you roaming about in an unfamiliar city by your lonesome, can we? You only get robbed blind and left shivering in your small clothes. Your small clothes. To the clothes that are not big. That guy in a little coat. Bolt priest. Nice glasses. Come, my brothers and sisters. There is food and shelter enough for all in the basilica. Hello and blessings be upon you, Father. I confess we were not sure if we should come. There are so many unbelievable tales these days about the Archbishop and Sir Emmerich and the Dravidians. Trust in your heart, brother, and pay no heed to the lies of lesser men. They seek only to lead you astray. 
Do you require succor as well, miss? So the Temple Knights have begun their investigation at last. Good, this madness has gone on far too long. Would that I could do something to aid you in your search, but I have a duty to these poor souls. Farewell, and may the fury guide your steps. And my axe. Well, that was useless. What about these folks? These fine looking folks over here. There was a man with a satchel. I saw him kneeling outside the window, and then there was smoke everywhere, and it was so hot, and I couldn't breathe. I don't remember how I made it out. I suppose I must have climbed. Maybe my armors get better after all. Unruffled refugee. Ours was one of the first homes to be claimed, but I didn't see how the fire began. It was only when I heard our neighbors shouting that I looked outside and saw the flames. We barely escaped with the clothes on our backs. Were it not for the church's generosity, I don't know what we'd do. Ah, there you are. Anything to share? Whew. We will require more than the muddled testimony of a traumatized girl if we are able to identify the culprit. While you were questioning the refugees, we inspected the scenes of several of the fires, including one near St. Rivermelon's Cathedral and another near the Tribunal. For mercy, neither structure suffered significant damage. Some might say they were spared by the grace of the Fury. Others might question how, much, how such ruthlessly efficient arsonists contrived to fail so miserably on the two occasions when their target was a bastion of Ishgardian orthodoxy. Hmm. <sighs> Nothing conclusive, of course, but it does give one cause to wonder. Alphano will doubtless have an opinion. Dude, aren't you cold? Curls? Nice. Silence will avail you not, sir. Oh, Burr, I was just about to summon you. As you can see, we have detained the suspect. We found this man loitering near the remains of one of the stricken buildings. According to eyewitnesses, he was also present before the fires broke out. We wished to have words. He did not. So we insisted. Let me go, damn it! You've got the wrong man. Sif, sif, my, but you reek of oil. And are those burns on your hands? An occupational hazard, I suppose. But tell me, does arson pay well? I'm a victim, you imbecile! Look at me! Aye, that you are. After a fashion. You should know that your pious patron has already spun us a delightful yarn about how his pet mongrel slipped the leash and set about burning half the city to the ground. Not very noble of him, I grant you, but then these highborn types rarely do show loyalty to their pets. In fact, he called you rabbit and begged us to put you down. <laughs> That's Bollocks. He's the one who told me to keep going. I got him. Even a sinner such as me could find salvation in the Fury's work, he said. I left it behind. Tried to, with all my heart. Said my prayers every day like a good man. But he came to me. He came to me. And there you have it, Hilda. Would you be so kind as to escort our friend here to the congregation? Aye, so long as you don't mind if he's limping limp when he gets there. That was incredible, Thancred. But how did you know he would confess? Well, I have seen his like before. A troubled soul, manipulated by men of power, wielded as a weapon. <laughs> I cannot be certain, of course, but given the stakes, I thought it worth the risk. And if our captive had called your bluff? Must we entertain hypotheticals? The world as it is is vexing enough. Thank you, Thancred. Whether by luck or judgment, we have at last confirmed that these arsons were orchestrated by a person or persons of influence. I think it best that we now return to the congregation and discuss how best to proceed. What's good? What's good? On behalf of the Holy See of Ishgard, I thank you all. The man you apprehended is being interrogated as we speak. Though he fell silent upon realizing that we had not turned his master. He will soon tell us what he knows, one way or another. Part of the intrusion, First Commander. Aye, Lord Artural. Are you come to see your father? He is attending Sir Emmerich in his chambers at present. 
I am. He bid me bring this cell. Then do not let me detain you, and thank you for your kindness, my lord. In times of trouble, every man must do his part. Would that I could do more. My lord Arturel did not seem to be in the best of spirits. Tis little wonder, Master Alphano. His father is widely slandered, and his half-brother not yet cold in the grave. Yeah, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this video, please like this video, because that'll help gather more folks to the video with the channel. We are aiming for 1k, so we're almost there. Also, if you are new and you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, we have a Discord link that is very, very fun. That link will be in the description underneath this video. And I also have all my other social media links and stuff that will be under there as well. And also, I do have a Patreon. If you're interested, that link is below. And that does help <laughs> get us uh, to support the channel so I can be here and do more stuff with you guys. All right. From uh, all of us to all of you. <laughs> Bye.